Hello and welcome to AzureMark.com and in this video, we'll talk about the different storage options in Azure Kubernetes Service. When it comes to deploying applications in a Kubernetes cluster, we do so by using pods, which are the basic building blocks of a Kubernetes cluster. Pods, as we have seen in the past, are supposed to be ephemeral or disposable. If a pod fails, we automatically replace it with a new pod. Having said that, there are some scenarios where you would want your pod to store or retrieve data. We'll talk about the different options we have with AKS on storing this data. In Kubernetes, we have two broad types of storage, volumes and persistent volumes. We'll talk about persistent volumes and persistent volume claims in the next video. In this video, we'll talk about volumes. Let's say you have a pod and one or more containers deployed inside the pod. And you want a mechanism where both these containers can share storage and we want that storage to be independent of the container. Enter volumes. Volumes provides an option of providing storage to the containers inside the pod. This volume is available to all the containers inside the pod. Even if a container, let's say, fails or restarts, this does not affect the data stored on these volumes. However, this volume is created at the time of pod creation and it's deleted at the time of pod deletion. In other words, the life cycle of the volume is coupled to the life cycle of the pod. In other words, a volume can outlive a container restart. However, if the pod itself restarts, the volume is lost since a volume is only residing inside the context of a pod. I mentioned volume is created as part of the pod and exists in the pod context. However, in reality, we want the containers to be leveraging this volume. How is that done? Well, that's done using volume mounts. And these volume mounts are defined as part of the container definition file inside the pod YAML. Let's quickly look at an example. This is the YAML file for a web frontend pod. We have a container inside the pod running Nginx. Firstly, we define the volume, which is defined as part of the pod context. We'll talk about the different types of volume in just a bit, but for now, we'll use the example of an empty DIR volume. This volume is available in the pod, but it's not yet real to the container unless we mount it. So we'll go ahead and use this volume mounts option to mount the volume that we created as part of the pod inside the container. Great, now that we understand the volumes and volume mounts, Let's talk about the different backend implementations of volumes in AKS. Let's start off with the AKS specific volume types, Azure Disks. Let's say you want to have a volume attached to only one pod at a time and be accessible only to that pod. For that use case, you would want to use an Azure Disk. Now these Azure Disks, it can be of any different type like premium SSD and different storage sizes. The way you would go about attaching your Azure Disks to a pod is this. First, you would create the disk manually. This disk can be created in the same resource group as the AKS nodes or a different resource group. There is another way to dynamically provision a disk too, which we'll cover in the upcoming video. Step number two, you would then provide the Azure disk information in the pod manifest file like this. Azure disk is great if you want a volume attached only to a single pod at a time. But what if you wanted to have multiple pods accessing the same volume at the same time? That's when you would want to go with an Azure Files option. The way you would go about attaching an Azure Files to a pod is something like this. First, we create the storage account. Then we create the file share within the storage account. We then create a Kubernetes secret using the storage account name and storage account key. We use this secret in our Azure file volume type. There you go. But one thing to remember is even though the volume itself gets deleted once the pod is deleted, when using Azure disk or Azure files as the backend storage, the data on the disk and file is persisted in spite of the volume being lost when the pod gets deleted. This is not true for all volume types like you'll see in just a bit. Great. So far, we talked about Azure Disk and Azure Files as two different volume types which are unique to AKS. Outside of this, we also have the standard Kubernetes volume types, which are MTDIR. This is commonly used as a temporary storage space for pods. 
This storage uses the underlying node storage or in some cases the underlying node's memory for providing the volume. This volume and data gets deleted after the pod gets deleted. We then have secrets. Secrets are created using the Kubernetes API. They are used to inject sensitive data into a pod, like let's say passwords or keys. Secrets are only available on the nodes where the pods or deployments are deployed. If a node doesn't have that particular pod, it would not get the secret. Secrets are stored in a tempfs in a node. When the last pod requesting the secret in a node is deleted, the secret also gets removed from the node's tempfs. The config maps are also like secrets, the only difference being they are used for injecting application configuration into a pod rather than sensitive information. Configuration maps can only be accessed within the namespace where they are created. We'll talk about persistent volumes, persistent volume claims and storage classes in the upcoming videos. Thank you for watching. I'll see you again in the next video.